This LOS is calculate and interpret free cash flow to the firm, free cash flow to equity, and performance and coverage cash flow ratios. Free cash flow to the firm and free cash flow to equity. So on the left hand side here, we're looking at free cash flow to the firm. That's the cash flow available to common stockholders, dead holders, and the preferred stockholders. But when we look over here at the free cash flow to equity, we're just looking at the cash flow that is available to the common stockholders, okay? Free cash flow to the firm and free cash flow to equity. So this is a formula that you need to memorize, the free cash flow to the firm. We call it FCFF and free cash flow to the equity, FCFE is what uh, you're gonna start to see. So the free cash flow to the firm is net income plus the non-cash charges such as depreciation and amortization plus the interest times one minus the tax rate minus the capital expenditures, fixed capital such as equipment and minus the working capital expenditures. So that would be changes in the balance sheet items for current assets and current liabilities. Remember, uh, current assets minus current liabilities equals our uh, working capital, okay? So I put three items here into green because that is our cash flow from operations, net income plus non-cash charges minus working capital expenditures, that equals our CFO. So you can rewrite the free cash flow to the firm equation as CFO, cash flow from operations, plus interest times one minus the tax rate minus the capital expenditures, okay? You may recall in the previous LOS when we were looking at the direct uh, cash flow uh, and we were using that example, I put the free cash flow to the firm and the free cash flow to the equity at the bottom of the Excel sheet, okay? So then moving along, another formula that you need to memorize is the free cash flow to the equity, which starts with the cash flow from operations minus the uh, capital expenditures, but it's plus net borrowing. Or if you're paying back debt, it's gonna be minus the net debt repayment, okay? So uh, free cash flow to equity. And again, as I said, I use that in my example uh, using the numbers from the text, we had the cash flow from operations was 2606 plus the interest times one minus the tax rate minus the cash flow from investing gave us our free cash flow to the firm. And for our free cash flow to equity, we start with the CFO, but we subtracted the uh, net investments in fixed capital. You can see that's the same number, but here we had debt repayments in that example. So it's here, we're gonna subtract the debt repayment of 500, and this gave us our free cash flow to the equity. Okay, I don't wanna scare you here. Let's look right at the bottom. This is from CFA level two for the equities, but this is why CFA level two has a 10 year pass rate of 43% because everything gets kicked up a notch, you know? So I just put this one in here as kind of an FYI for a little bit of fun to see where you're headed. And this is from the equity sections because they do um, equity valuation using the uh, free cash flows, okay? So you can see this is what we have for CFA level one, free cash flow to the firm, CFO minus the CapEx uh, plus uh, the interest times one minus the tax rate, okay? And for the free cash flows to the equity was the CFO minus, and I use a bit of color coding, remember that number was the same, then it's plus or minus the net borrowings. But what they do in level two, they kick it up a notch. You can begin with net income, you can begin with uh, CFO, or you can begin with EBIT or EBITDA. So here we have the formula starting with EBIT and EBITDA, okay? And uh, so when they give you some information, uh, you need to be able to start the, your formula uh, with, with those items, okay? So there's a little bit more memorization. Don't need to worry about that, that's FYI for level two, but that's why it gets uh, kicked up a notch. So we'll do a quick uh, practice question to check our understanding. An analyst gathers the following annual information in millions about a company that pays no dividends and has no debt. Net income, 45.8, depreciation, 8.2, Loss on sale of equipment, 1.6. Decrease in accounts receivable, 4.2. Increase in inventories, 3.4. Increase in accounts payable, 2.5. Capital expenditures, 7.3. And proceeds from sale of stock, 8.5. The company's annual free cash flow to equity in millions is closest to A, 53.1, B, 58.4, or C, 
61.6. This is a nice little question because it carries on with our cash flow from operations and we're using the indirect method. We have to calculate our CFO first before we can calculate our cash flow to the equity. So recall how we do that. We're going to do net income plus depreciation. We had a loss on the sale of equipment, so we're going to add that back. A decrease in accounts receivable, that means we've got cash in. That's going to be a positive. Increase in inventories, that's a cash out, so that's a negative. And we increased our accounts payable, that's going to be a positive. And so if we uh, do those calculations, the 45.8 plus the 18.2 plus the 1.6 plus the uh, 4.2, uh, minus the 3.4 plus the 2.5, we're going to get our cash flow from operations as 68.9. Then we know our free cash flow to the equity is our CFO minus our um, capital expenditures, which is given to us here as the 7.3, plus or minus any net borrowings. Okay, But in here, it says that the company has no debt. So there was no net borrowings. And this bit of information, the proceeds from the stock sale, that's put in there as red herring information, okay? So you can see uh, it, we've calculated the CFO 68.9. We're going to subtract the 7.3, and we're going to get the correct answer to be 61.6, which is C. So a nice little question. It's a good review of how you have to calculate the cash flow from operations using the indirect method with our increases or decrease in our assets or liabilities accounts. Plus, it gave us a little bit of red herring information, proceeds from the stock sale that we did not need, and there was no debt. If there was some borrowings, if we borrowed money, we would add it. If we paid debt back, we would subtract it. So a good little practice question. Another practice question. A firm reported the following financial statement items. Cash flow in uh, euros. Net income, 2100 Non-cash charges, 400. Interest expense, 300. Capital expenditure, 210. Working capital expenditure, zero. Net borrowing, 1600. Tax rate, 40%. The free cash flow to the firm is closest to A, euros 2110, B, euros 2470, or C, euros 2590. Okay, this is a nice question. We have to memorize the formula, the free cash flow to the firm. Now it's not equity. They're looking for the free cash flow to the firm. It's net income plus the non-cash charges plus the interest times one minus the tax rate minus the um, capital expenditures minus the working capital expenditures, okay? Now you can see that the question also gave us the net borrowings. I put that in red. We don't need that for the free cash flow to the firm. That comes in the free cash flow to the equity, which is cash flow from operations minus the capital expenditures plus or minus the uh, net borrowings. So again, they're giving you some red herring information. You need to know the formula. If you know the formula, this is a pretty easy calculation. If you get confused about what's in the formula, what's not in the formula, start confusing your free cash flow to the equity to your free cash flows to the firm then you're in trouble. And that's why I said you've got to get these formulas memorized. Write it down, throw it away, write it down, throw it away. You know, that's what I do. I'd write it out 10, 20 times over and over uh, in each of my study sessions until I've got it. Okay, because then you can see it's just easy. It's net income plus the non-cash charges plus the interest times one minus the tax rate, though. you got to be on top of that. Less the capital expenditures. And there was no working capital expenditures. That's fine, and that gives us free cash flow to the firm, 2470, which is B. As I've often said, when in doubt, guess B. Uh, and so that's a nice little question. Um, not too difficult if you've got the formula memorized. If you don't have the me formula perfectly memorized, you could be in trouble or guessing. Now we're moving on to the second part of the LOS from how to calculate the free cash flows to the firm or the free cash flows to the equity and into the cash flow ratios. So anytime we have a ratio, we've got a numerator and we have a denominator. So the good news is you can see the numerator here for the cash flow ratios is all CFO. So that's done. We just have to understand what the uh, ratio is and what the denominator is and what it's measuring. So the first one, cash flow to revenue, cash flow divided by net revenue, it's telling us our cash generated per dollar of revenue. Uh, cash return to assets, 
The de uh, denominator is the average total assets. Anytime we're using something from the balance sheet, we're using the average. And it's our operating cash generated per dollar of asset investment. Cash return on equity, cash flow from operations divided by average shareholders equity. Again, we're using the average. And it's our operating cash generated per dollar of owner investment. Cash flow to income, CFO divided by operating income. It's our cash generating ability of operations. And finally, our cash flow per share is our CFO minus our preferred dividends, because again, we're talking about uh, uh, common shareholders, divided by the uh, number of common shares outstanding. Okay, so that's our performance ratios. In terms of our coverage ratios, uh, again, the numerator is always CFO. The denominator for de uh, debt coverage is total debt. Um, it asks, uh, what it measures, it's measuring the financial leverage. Interest coverage is going to be okay. There's a little bit of uh, uh, change to the numerator in this case. It's CFO plus the interest paid plus the taxes paid divided by the interest paid, and that's the ability to meet interest obligations. Okay. Uh, reinvestment CFO divided by cash paid for long term assets. That's the ability to acquire assets uh, with operating cash flows. Debt repayment uh, cash flow from operations divided by cash paid for long-term debt repayment, the ability to uh, pay debts with operating cash flows. C uh, dividend payment, as that should be an easy one. CFO divided by dividends paid, and that's the ability to pay dividends with operating cash flows. Finally, investing and financing, CFO divided by cash outflows for investing and finance, seeing activities, and that uh, measures the ability to acquire assets, pay debts, and make uh, distributions to the owners. So we have a question here giving us a lot of data. As I sometimes, as a study tip, remind uh, candidates, read the question first what they're asking for, that when you're scanning the data, um, you know what you're starting to look for. So this one, it says the cash flow debt coverage ratio for the year is closest to A, 20.6%, B, 23.7%, or C, 27.4%. So we're looking cash flow, CFO is the numerator, to debt coverage, okay? So they're giving us the cash flow from operating 105. Aha, that is probably our numerator. Cash flow from investing, negative 11.8. Cash flow from financing, 46.5. Net change in cash for the year, 140.6. Interest paid, included in the CFO is 22.4. Taxes paid, tax rate of 30%, 18. And uh, total debt at the end of the year, 512.8. So again, it's asking for the cash flow to debt coverage ratio. Well, okay, that question's not too bad if you remember the formula. The cash flow debt coverage is CFO divided by total debt. So as I said, we have our CFO, it's 105.9, and we have our total debt at the end of the year, 512.8. So that's all we needed to do. We have our numerator and our denominator, and 105.9 divided by 512.8 equals 20.6, so the correct answer is A. So you can see in this case, all this information here was red herring information. You didn't need it. It was there. It was meant to uh, try to confuse you. So again, you got to get your formulas memorized and have confidence in it. Debt coverage for uh, cash flow debt coverage, CFO divided by total debt. There's my numerator. There's my denominator. That's a lot less than 90 seconds and an easy question if you have the formula memorized. If you don't, you can really start going down a lot of wrong roads practice question and for this one I wrote read carefully a company issued shares to acquire a large tract of undeveloped land for future development the most likely recording of this transaction in the cash flow statement is a disclosure in a note or supplementary schedule B outflow from investing activities and an inflow from financing activities or C outflow from operating activities and an inflow from financing activities this should be an easy one once you know the rule. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me, correct? So this is a shares for land. It's a non-cash transaction. No cash has moved hands. I've given you shares, you've given me the land. So the correct answer is A, non-cash transactions are not reported in the cash flow statement, but if they are significant, they are reported in a note or supplementary schedule. So an easy question once you've uh, got that uh, understood. Non-cash transactions, this is shares for land. No cash has moved hands. 
It's going to be disclosure in the note or supplementary schedule. And one last practice question just to finish this LOS. Which of the following transactions is least likely to increase a company's reported cash from operations? A. Securitizing accounts receivable. B. Delaying payments made to suppliers. Or C. Using short-term debt to reduce an existing account payable. Okay, in this case we're looking for the least likely, so we're looking um, for the false. So to increase a company's reported cash from operations, securitizing accounts receivable, that's true, that will increase because our accounts receivable are going to go down, means our cash from operations is going to go up. Delaying payments made to the suppliers, our accounts payable is going to go up, and uh, so we know that's also an increase to our cash. And so C, using short-term debt to reduce an account, uh, uh, an existing accounts payable. At, remember, this is just going back to assets equals liabilities plus equity. What am I doing? I'm increasing one liability, which is my short-term debt, to decrease my other liability, which is an existing accounts payable. And so that's going to be no change to L. And that, therefore, it can't uh, increase a company's reported cash from operations. And that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.